uh, welcome everyone in attendance to uh, to the next National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada Behind the Bench webinar. Um, I'm uh, I'm really pleased to uh, to be joined by a, a Canadian coach who's got an extensive background in the game uh, as as a professional player and of course as a professional coach and, and also a, a national team coach an international coach and of course that's the you know the, the topic of our talk today is uh, you know uh, what does it take to become a professional coach and uh, so Colin Miller uh, welcome uh, you know it's, it's it's great to have you uh, on, on our uh, on our webinar here and uh, maybe if you'd like to start just uh, give us a, a brief kind of introduction and, and, and background uh, as I said I know you've got lots of experience in the program at the higher levels and how did you get started and, you know, briefly, how did, how did you end up uh, end up here where you are now? Well, first of all, thank you, Richard and, and John. I know John's in the background there somewhere, but uh, thank you for the invitation. It's very kind. I, I don't know if we'll learn anything today, but we should have a good laugh if nothing else. But, Absolutely. Um, you know, coaching was was always something that I wanted to do, even as a, as a player uh, towards the tail end of my career in the Scottish Premier League. Even the referees called me coach because I was... That was my nickname uh, back in Scotland. But uh, it was a long and very winding road to get to where I am now, to be honest with you. Um, I was incredibly fortunate during my, my playing career to work with some terrific managers, uh, some not so uh, that I've learned from as well. Richard, I'm sure we'll touch base later on in, in the conversation. But my my uh, I always had leadership qualities, I guess, uh, as a footballer. You know, I, I captained our national team on 38 occasions. And, uh, you know, I, I, I always wanted to be a coach. So when I when I went from the Toronto Blizzard back to, back to the famous Glasgow Rangers, and for those who are listening, this is the home of the famous Glasgow Rangers in the 60s, the print that I have here. Um, you know, I, I, I played for the club that I supported, that I loved uh, and still love very dearly. And during that time, uh, I, you know, Jock Wallace, the manager, actually mentioned to me that I should really work on getting my coaching licenses, believe it or not. And I was at 20 years of age. So I then got sold to Doncaster Rovers, uh, Richard. And uh, during that time at Doncaster Rovers, I took out my English C license uh, or preliminary license, I believe it was called at that time. And that was taken over a number of weekends and, and, uh, uh, it certainly helped that the fact that you were a professional footballer, that that gave you a sort of head start, if you like. So I did that down in England and came back up to Scotland uh, to play for Hamilton Academical, who were in the Scottish Premier League at the time. And then, of course, uh, the story of my career managed to get them relegated again. Uh, so we're back in the first division and the, some of the staff were, were part time. But at 23 years of age, I was given the opportunity to be the reserve team coach. So I would train in the morning with the first team lads and, and, you know, I played over 200 games for Hamilton. And then in the evenings, I would work with the reserve team and, uh, and actually take the team. I was in charge of the team, but I had a, one of the best mentors anyone could ever have in the game. And his name was Willie McLean. And the former Scottish national team coach, Craig Brown, told me that Willie McLean was the most knowledgeable football person that he knew. So I had Willie sitting in the corner, just arms folded, listening to everything thing that I was saying to the players and if you think that taking your various license is very intimidating when you have William McLean sitting in the corner uh, you know listening to all your details what an education it was Richard and he, he certainly made some serious impression on my coaching career he made some real good points you know not to generalize all the time can we be more specific and so on and so forth so then it, it, it kind of progressed uh, from there uh, I, I became the Hamilton's player manager at, at, uh, at 33, myself and, and Billy Davis, was, he was the manager of Motherwell at the time. We were the two youngest managers of Scottish football. So that was pretty good. Now, I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly now because I know sure. we're going to cover them in a little bit more depth. But, uh, so I was the Hamilton player manager for, for a year and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking about that one because... I know we'll probably have a, a number of younger coaches on the call here today that maybe have aspirations to be in the manager or, or first team coach or whatever. So that was quite an experience. From there, I came back to uh, at the Abbotsford Soccer Association, where I'm now uh, the technical director and, and uh, lead coach in terms of the coaching development. I work with a, a fantastic boss called Ian Knight, and, and Ian is... Uh, 
was a former Youth England international uh, uh, for his troubles. We all have our problems, you know, but uh, I, I try and look after the big fella. Uh, so we get on very well. There's a great deal of trust, and that's something else that at times can be lacking in our industry, that's for sure. But uh, really, really enjoying being back home. This is where I live, but for so many years I've lived away from the family, and we'll cover that later on. Uh, and then I, uh, during my time at, at, as the Abbotsford head coach, from 2000 to 2007, I became Holger Osiek's assistant coach of the men's national team. And that was, a, that was an experience. That was a bit of an eye-opener as well, um, you know, both working with the players and, and, of course, working with Holger, who wasn't everyone's cup of tea, Richard. He was, uh, you know, I got on very, very well with, with Holger and, and a lot of trust with him. And I saw good things, and we'll go through that later on. Also, we're going to go through a lot of things by the looks of it. But, but it was a, it was a great education for me. A great education. His experience was was wonderful. Um, and while I, after that experience of, of of Abbotsford soccer, I then I don't know how many other Canadians have, have actually coached in the English Premier League. But I was the first team coach at Derby County in the English Premier League, and I worked with uh, Billy Davis, who I played with at Rangers. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to cover that in, in a fair bit of detail. I'm sure some of the listeners are very interested in that experience. Uh, but Billy was easily the best coach that I've seen on field. Uh, tremendous attention to detail, very, very similar to, to John Herdman. Um, from there, I came back to the Abbotsford Soccer Association. Like everything in professional football, these your, your terms seem to be very short-lived. And... Uh, so that was another very short lived experience, but uh, a wonderful experience nevertheless. And I became the Abbotsford head coach again. I then got the opportunity to go and work as the first head coach uh, with the Victoria Highlanders in the PDL. And that was a great experience. That was uh, our owner, Alex Campbell at the time, did a great job in trying to professionalize everything of the running of the club. Drew Farrati who was the general manager. And we did, a, we did a great job of trying to raise the profile of football on the island, uh, which is a real hotbed for football, you know, just winning the CPL Championship, of course, with Pacific. Um, it doesn't surprise me the success that they're having over there because it's been, for many, many years, a real good football place, uh, for sure. And then I, I became the, the University of Fraser Valley's uh, women's head coach, Richard. And that was an experience I loved. I loved every minute of it, uh, working with the women there. And I was actually in tears when I left the job uh, to then go to be the Whitecaps assistant coach with, with Tato Thordeson, um, uh, who was just a wonderful person, first of all. And uh, in my opinion, uh, and I know I, I do the colour commentary on the radio for the Whitecaps, I have done for the last three or four years. As you can see, I have the face and bone structure for me. So it works out differently for me. Um, but I, in my opinion, uh, I thought the Whitecaps were at least the, Tater far, far too early. He was do I thought he was doing a good job. Still had command of the dressing room as well. Uh, but he, it, was a, it was another wonderful experience working alongside him. And then uh, I was also uh, John Herdman's, one of his staff coaches with the women's team and possibly could have gone to the Olympics in London with John as, as a member of his, sta his staff, maybe as a scout or so on. Um, but Unfortunately, I stayed back in Vancouver and, and continued to look for work here. Um, but that was another wonderful experience working with with the, with the girls. It was it was great. And then I became the manager of FC Edmonton uh, for five years in North American soccer league. And that was that in itself. What a, a, a great experience it was. There were some genuine highs and some genuine lows as well. And we'll cover that, of course, as as part of it. It's not Pep, not all Pep Guardiola's. Uh, <laughs> I can assure you. And then uh, I was a North Shore Girls Technical Director for about two and a half, just over two and a half years, uh, fairly recently. And then since uh, last March, April time, I've, I've been working here back in Abbotsford and, and still doing the uh, colour commentary for the Whitecaps. So that brings us right up to date. So that gives you a, a brief a brief rundown there, Richard. Yeah, that's it's, it's it's quite an amazing career, and 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 I mean, congratulations, of course, on on, on all of your accomplishments. And I know you mentioned, uh, yeah, I, I I don't know if there's another uh, Canadian who's who's coached in the English Premier League. I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I mean, both Francis Lido's done some good coaching as well, yeah. but I don't know if it was in the Premier League. In the, in the Premier League, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you for watching this short preview video from the National Soccer Coaches Association of Canada. 
To see the full video, plus have access to hundreds of other coaching videos, blogs, webinars, and podcasts, plus free and discounted coach education courses and other soccer merchandise, plus to have exclusive access to register for all future NSCAC conventions, both live and online, click on the link below to become a member of the NSCAC today. Also, please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as your continued support allows us to continue to provide coach education and coach development resources to soccer coaches across Canada and worldwide. Thank you again for your continued support and we look forward to seeing you at future NSCAC events.